perfect in Christ Jesus. Do you not feel in your own soul that perfection is not in you? Does not every day teach you that? Every tear which trickles from your eye weeps imperfection. Every harsh word which proceeds from your lip mutters imperfection. You have too frequently had a view of your own heart to dream for a moment of any perfection in yourself. But amidst this sad consciousness of imperfection, here is a comfort for you. You are perfect in Christ Jesus. In God's sight, you are complete in Him. Even now, you are accepted in the Beloved. But there is a second perfection, yet to be realized, which is sure to be all the seed. It is not delightful to look forward to in the time when every stain of sin shall be removed from the believer, and he shall be presented faultless before the throne without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. The Church of Christ, then, will be so pure that not even the eye of omniscience will see a spot or blemish in her, so holy and so glorious that heart did not go beyond the truth when he said, With my Saviour's garments on, holy as the Holy One. Then shall we know and taste and feel the happiness of this vast but short sentence, complete in Christ. Not till then shall we fully comprehend the heights and depths of the salvation of Jesus. Doth not my heart leap for joy at the thought of it? Black as thou art, thou shalt be white one day. Filthy as thou art, thou shalt be clean. Oh, it is a marvelous salvation, this. Christ takes a worm and transforms it into an angel. Christ takes a black and deformed thing and makes it clean and matchless in his glory, peerless in his beauty, and fit to be the companion of seraphs. Ah, oh, my soul, stand and admire this blessed truth of perfection in Christ. And the shepherd returned, glorifying and praising God for all things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. What was the subject of their praise? They praised God for what they had heard, for the good tidings of great joy that a Saviour was born unto them. Let us copy them, let us raise a song of thanksgiving, that we have heard of Jesus and his salvation. They also praised God for what they had seen. There is the sweetest music, what we have experienced and what we have felt within, what we have made our own, the things which we have touching the King. It is not enough to hear about Jesus. Mere hearing may tune the heart, but the fingers of living faith must create the music. If you have seen Jesus with the God-giving sight of faith, suffer no cobwebs to linger among the harp strings, but loud to the praise of sovereign grace, awake your psaltery and harp. One point which they praised God was the agreement between what they had heard and what they had seen. Observe the last sentence, as it was told unto them. Have you not found the gospel to be in yourselves just what the Bible said it would be? Jesus said he would give you rest. Have you not enjoyed the sweetest peace in him? He said you should have joy and comfort and life through believing in him. Have you not received all these? Are not his ways of pleasantness and his paths peace of peace? Surely you can say with the Queen of Sheba, The half was not been told me. I have found Christ more sweet than his servant ever said he was. I looked upon his likeness as they painted it, but it was a mere daub compared with himself, for the king in his beauty outshines all imaginable loveliness. Surely we have seen keeps pace with, nay, far exceeds what we have heard. Let us then glorify and praise God for a Savior so precious and so satisfying.